Electric bass guitar is an instrument that is firmly based in tradition. Fender began making electric basses in 1951, and that basic design has changed surprisingly little in the past 70 years. So it's no wonder that because of that long-standing convention, musicians are kind of resistant to change. Musicians are notoriously conservative in their choice of musical instruments. There's quite a lot of resistance to designs that deviate from that four-string convention. In today's video, I want to talk specifically about five-string basses, which despite not being all that radical, get quite a lot of pushback from a certain subset of bass players. Like this guy. Why are you mad, bro? I... Don't touch the microphone. I am AMP the bass player, and if you don't hit the like button, you're gonna break a string at your next gig. Sorry, I don't make the rules. Let's talk about fibers. The first five string basses started to appear in the mid 70s from custom bass manufacturers like Carl Thompson and Alembic, among others. It wasn't until 1984 though that we saw a production bass model. That model was the BB-5000 from Yamaha, which is actually the grandfather of the bass I have. If you already follow me on TikTok or Instagram, you've already seen quite a lot of this bass because I've been consistently gigging with it over the past month and a half. And suffice it to say, I really like it. It's really good. Now this actually isn't my first five string that I've ever owned. Back in the early 2010s, I had an SR-205 five string from Ibanez and I really never got along with it. I was playing in punk bands at the time and I just kind of never figured out how to use the low B on it. So I got rid of it after a couple years. This time around, I'm actually getting quite a lot of value out of it. I'm in a different spot musically, I'm in a completely different kind of band, and the five string is working really, really well for me. Now, I can only imagine that there's somebody watching this video who's gonna say, Jocko only needed four strings, but that's because five strings didn't really exist in Jocko's lifetime, not in a big way. I can almost guarantee that if they did, he'd be playing one. In fact, his son plays one. Anyway, I don't mean the derail things. Here's the five reasons that I think you might want to check out a five string bass. Number one, the extended range. So the first most obvious advantage of a five string is that you get five extra notes. The fifth fret here is the same as your open E on your typical E string, and then you also get an E flat, a D, a D flat or a C sharp, a C, and then of course the low B. So that might not seem like a lot of notes, but all of these notes are what's in called the cash register as opposed to the upper register. They call this the cash register because that's where all the money notes are, and that is 100% accurate. This is where all the notes are that you're going to use for meat and potatoes bass playing. This is especially fantastic if your band does anything in drop D because now instead of having to detune your low E, your D is just right here. The thing that I really like about that is that you don't end up in a drop tuning. You get to stay in standard tuning, which means that all of your scale patterns still work. And also because five strings are tuned in fourths all the way up, the scale patterns work even on the B string. So your typical works on the B string as well. Two, less moving around the fretboard. Speaking of scales, if you want to go further than one octave on a four string bass, it requires a little bit of jumping around. For example, that G major scale. To get two octaves, you end up all the way up here on the 12th fret. If you do it on a five string bass, you can actually get the full two octaves in one position. Check this out. See that? You don't even have to shift around. It's a bit of a stretch to get to those three notes on the two lower strings, but you can do it from one position because those notes are now physically closer together. The G and then two octaves up right there, as opposed to the G here and then two octaves here on a four string bass. What this means is that you don't have to shift around as much. It makes your bass playing a little bit smoother and a lot more effortless.
Number three, easier transposing. Have you ever had a vocalist tell you that a song is in too high of a key and then you have to transpose it down and then you end up having to use higher notes that just don't sound quite as good? Well, with a five string, you have room to move down. This all makes transposing way more forgiving and a lot more flexible. If you hadn't noticed, a lot of songs written on guitar are written in the key of E, which means that if you transpose them down a half step, you end up having to use the E flat way up here. With a five string, you still get to play that low note. Number four, more creative options. Now this might sound a little bit cliche, but I find that I just play a little bit differently on a five string bass. Something about it just does something to where my fingers wanna go. I'm viewing the fretboard in a little bit different way, so the note choices that I make are just different than they would be on a four string bass. There's also something to be said for note timbre. For example, the low E, Sounds like this there, but it sounds a little different here. It's like a little bit deeper, a little bit warmer. It just looks badass. I mean, come on, look at this thing. It is so beefy and legit looking, come on. So all of this isn't to say that five string basses are the perfect bass for everything. They're not a be all end all. Everything in gear is a series of trade-offs, pros and cons. So here are five things that I think are drawbacks of five string basses. One, muting can be more difficult. If you're like me and you came from a four string bass and now are playing on a five string, it is easy to forget this low B and just let it ring out unintentionally. For example, in the song Forget Me Nots where you're doing this disco slap line, you end up playing here and you don't really have fingers left over to mute this low B unless you're reaching your middle finger here over. It's really awkward, it doesn't feel good, and you're constantly having to do it throughout this line. Check this out. It's just hard. It's just a little bit hard. And that's gonna be specific to each song that you play, but muting is just a little bit more difficult on a five string. In fact, the next time that you hear somebody who doesn't normally play on a five string, pay attention to that low B ringing out. lower register requires either more power or higher quality speakers to reproduce the sound faithfully. If you're playing on a smaller amp that just doesn't quite have the necessary power, then this low B is going to sound kind of wimpy or distorted even. This goes double if you're going to be playing in a club where the PA doesn't have subs. You're just going to miss out on all of that low end rumble that you would get from these lower notes. to overdo. Now there's a temptation when you have an extra thing to play with to try and incorporate it into everything you do and then it just becomes a gimmick and that's definitely not where you want to be when you're playing bass. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. As I've been working this bass into my band's music I try and just find one spot per song where it really fits to make the most impact. For example when I play just my imagination with my band I'm going to the low B the second time through the second chorus because at that point I've established the progression and this way I get to introduce a little bit of tonal variety. <laughs>
five strings, just by their nature, are heavier than four string basses. Last week when I was playing all of these gigs, I had three gigs plus a rehearsal, and by the end of it, my shoulder was really sore. I actually just barely got this wider couch strap. This is a three inch wide strap. I haven't used it at a gig yet, but I will tonight. So I'm gonna insert footage of future me telling you how it went. It, it definitely helped. And finally, number five, extended range basses can be viewed as pretentious. Now this might be less of an issue with five strings and more of an issue with six and seven and on, but there is a stigma against extended range basses because you know musicians are really conservative, like I said. And this isn't limited to just other bass players either. Other musicians are gonna have their opinions on stuff, and if you show up with something that isn't just a fairly standard Fender P or J, they might give you the side eye about it. And I know their opinion doesn't really matter all that much if you can just play the gig, but it is kind of annoying dealing with the attitude. So those are my thoughts on five string basses, the pros and the cons. If you're on the fence about five strings, let me know down in the comments what you're most concerned about. And if you already play a five string, well, congrats on getting through this whole video so that you can fact check me on everything. But let me know down in the comments what five string bass you'd recommend to somebody who's just starting to check them out. I am AMP the bass player. I will see you on the next video. I gotta go because my dog is licking his butthole. Taco, stop! <laughs>